96 FM. Daniel, thanks for joining us from Israel. A Corkman, they're a few years, I think, now. Uh, that's right, PJ. I've been living in Jerusalem now for five years. What took you there in the first place? So I did. There's a, there's a kind of a concept called Aliyah, which is basically Jewish people moving out to Israel. So I grew up Jewish in Cork and uh, I guess just kind of felt attracted to somewhere where that was a bit more normal than in Cork, which is, you know, very, very small, yeah. uh, non-existing community almost. Interesting story in itself. So talk to me, Daniel, about life in Israel. We hear all sorts of stories about mass vaccinations, really fast vaccination of huge numbers of people and great results back from the research. So what can you tell us? So yeah, the, the rollout's definitely been very quick. It kind of got going, um, you know, quite suddenly. So they're doing it by age group. So I'm 32. Uh, my only health concern is asthma. So I was kind of towards the very, very tail end. And at this point, basically, you know, kind of almost everybody has been called in for their for their vaccination, and as, as you know, it's a two-dose vaccination, so I'm between the first and second doses. So so you've already had a jab? I have already. I, I had number one, and I'm uh, waiting for number two. Right. And how long more have you got to wait for number two? Three weeks between them, so I have another week. To, next This day, next week, it'll be the second one. Reading a piece uh, in Bloomberg in the last couple of days, they're saying, look, while the vaccination is going very, very well, it's going to be a very slow return to the economy. Now, I've been in Jerusalem a couple of times. Busy doesn't describe the place. So how has it been, say, for the last few months? It's been very, very quiet. So the first, you know, the first lockdown was relatively brief and then they opened up the the pubs again. And that was only, um, I've been in, I've been to a bar two times in the last year or so. Growing up in Cork, that should mm. <laughs> that that should tell you how boring it's been. So it's been a very very long lockdown, and at at the moment, what they're doing is if you have this this app, this green passport, um, you can get into. Uh, they're rolling that out next week, actually. So they just started opening up shops uh, and museums, but the the restaurants and the you know those kind of places aren't open yet. But it's going it's going to be that's how they're going to do it. You're going to present this. QR code on your phone on a printout, right? Um, but uh, yeah, as as to, as to how it's been, it's it's been you know inc- just incredibly boring. Everything's been essentially shut uh, for the past few months. Was Israel the f- one of the first places actually to go into a second lockdown? Yeah, it was exactly. So it was, it was very it was very quick in and but the, the you know this lockdown's been been very protracted and it's only been a couple of weeks since it was they started to to open stuff up again. Yeah, so. Say you want to go to a shop or you want to go to a cafe. How does this thing work on your phone? So they've just there. It, it's chaotic is only a way to describe it. So I was actually only looking at it this morning because it's not until you've had the second vaccine and then you wait a week that you can actually get the code. So I was just checking it out. And, um, you know, basically you'll it, it's tied to your system. So the way it works is there's a few different health funds and every citizen has to be in one of these health organizations. Um, so basically once you do it, you know, you get a credential and then you download an app and that's the way they want people to do it is to use the smartphone app. But uh, I was reading that they've, you know, they've created a system for if you want to get the literally a piece of paper in the post, you can do that. So there is going to be ways for everybody to get uh, this code if they want it. And then you're going to show that to um, a venue and the venue is going to is going to have to use the app as well. So you're going to need to use the app and give that to the venue. So it's all going to be through this system um, is, is how it's going to work. So when you're going into somewhere like, and you say a venue, say a pub or a concert hall or a theater or wherever you want to go, you will have the, the app on your phone. They'll have the app on their computers and their app will check your vaccination status and, and in you go. Is that it? That's pretty much it. And then if, you know, the people that have had COVID um, are exempt. So there's there's a group of about 77,000 I was reading today that have had it. So therefore, they um, they're not getting the vaccines at all, but they'll also be eligible for the for that status in this app.
But it's it's all it's all very 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 experimentary. The apps the apps uh, the apps a bit of a disaster. The listing in the app store doesn't even say what it does. So you know it's basically you can see, and I'm sure it's the same in in Ireland that you know the, the governments are basically winging this and trying to do the best managing a, a very strange situation. So it, it's it's not as as um, you know amazing as maybe comes across in the news. It is very quick on the vaccination front, but all the details. Is, is kind of in a bit of a state of uh, flux at the moment. Yeah, they, they seem to be, and I suppose we use the term making it up as they go along, but literally that's what they're doing. They're, they're kind of suck it and see as you go along. Is that it? Yeah, I, the communication here has been chaotic. You read something in the news that this is going to open and then two hours later in Facebook the groups another thing and then an hour later there's a different announcement so that's kind of been the way it's gone it's been very very disorganised uh, all, all over the place basically which on the couple of occasions I've been there briefly it's a very technologically advanced country so, so therefore to have this kind of randomness I suppose about it that, that must be strange yeah, I think it's just the decision making process has been has been it, it, there's kind of politics and that just kind of bleeds down into the, you know, there's there's people arguing about these cabinet meetings going until two in the morning and then they leak something and another guy leaks another thing and then just the, what's actually going on between, becomes quite hard to to figure out. I think we can all identify with that people leaking stuff and or someone else leaking something else. So I suppose we take some solace from that, Daniel, that our government aren't the only crowd. That, that can't decide who's telling us what and, and when. Is it the politicians are taking the lead or the scientists? Um, that's a tough question. I mean, yeah, it's, I'd say it, it's been politically, it's, there, there's been wrangling definitely between the two. So they appointed a coronavirus SAR, as, as they say, which I guess just means someone responsible for it. So they they kind of took it back from, from the political realm after a while. And now it seems to be they're kind of, they've improved that kind of uh, consultation process. So there, there's both elements involved. What's the mood of the people like? I mean, as I'm sure here at, here at home, you, you'll know that people are just about at the end of their tether at this stage. They're looking for something positive to come out from the authorities to kind of reassure them that it will be okay. And to a certain extent, the government is losing the room here. What's it like in Jerusalem these days? Uh, yeah, it's it's it, it. That sounds that sounds pretty similar. So it's there's a there's a festival, a religious festival called Purim, and uh, that's now actually like to as as we're speaking um, here. So that's usually sort of a, a big drinking fest. I mean, the, potentially the closest thing I could compare it to would be Patrick's Day. So uh, like you know, if if you think of the Patrick's Day parade being cancelled people were not very happy about that so it's kind of the same um, that there's a curfew currently and you have to be within a thousand meters of your house between basically overnight i don't know the exact times it's like eight o'clock and half five in the morning right so that's that's so basically this this kind of highlight of the year jerusalem wouldn't be um the biggest you know drinking city but there there is a great public parade once a year uh, for this festival and that's basically gone out the window so obviously that kind of thing isn't fun so there there is a sense of there is light at the end of the tunnel because the vaccines are happening and the campaigns in progress but you know ultimately people including me have been basically at home for a year and that kind of uh, gets to people to say the least and do you live alone or have you people living with you uh, I live with my wife, so it's just the two of us in a in an apartment. So, hmm. so the per- perfect perfect recipe for for cabin fever. <laughs> Talk about quarantine with regard to to Israel. I mean, entering Israel, you you've got to have your paperwork straight anyway, no matter where you come from, any time of of the year. But what's it been like quarantine wise? Is it mandatory for people for people coming to the country? If you're leaving, so at, at the moment they've basically closed down the the airport and they're just looking at, at opening it up again to flights. And even people, there are people abroad that they're they're putting on these rescue flights to to bring them in. So uh, the airport's been there's only one air, airport essentially. It's a bit um, there is another one, but it's you know Ben Gurion is is yeah. basically kind of serves the whole country. So yeah, when when that's closed, there's kind of really no way in and no way out, practically speaking. So and how long has that been closed? 
now it's been closed now for for a while it's you know a few a, a couple of weeks so um yeah it's it, it's uh it's kind of a strange feeling when you're reading these posts on social media that people are applying for for per emergency permits to leave the country and that kind of thing it feels it feels like the the matrix or something mm. like if you wanted to get back to cork now for some reason uh, would they let you out or more importantly would they let you back in it could it could be complicated. So there's there's uh, there is a system for applying for these these kind of passes to get round, but obviously then you need a, a flight to be put on. So I think I think it would be hard. And then of course there's the the whole thing on the Irish side. So I haven't been back actually since the since the pandemic kicked off, kind of for this. Well, actually mostly because I just didn't want to to risk the the trip. There's no direct flight, so I didn't think it was worth you know three airplane journeys um, each way. I'm sure you'll know, Daniel, from growing up in Cork that there's a, a lot of sympathy and there will be a lot of sympathy among my listeners for the Palestinian cause. And there was a rumour going around on various news sites over the last few weeks that Palestinian people weren't being given vaccines, that it was being held back from them. Now, you're there in, in Jerusalem, right in the heart of all of this. What is happening that you can see? So they, I, I was reading today that there are some vaccines going to the Palestinian Authority and to, to other governments in the in the neighborhood. So there, it didn't specify the quantity. I'm not. I I think the basic the basic issue is that the the Palestinian Authority, which is which is called the you know the PA, is sort of its own entity um, within Israel. Obviously, there is the West Bank, and you're really just talking about cities. Um, and the Gaza Strip, and they have, um, under the Oslo Accords, I think are supposed to have sovereignty for their situation, and they're they're getting their own supply in. That was that's been my understanding of of sort of what's going on. So um, I'm not sure it, it's 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 so much the case that they're being held back than they are getting it themselves, or they're supposed to be getting it themselves, but they're not. They haven't managed to 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 get it in as quickly as. As Israel has, I think. A lot of people would cross, of course, from Palestinian territory into Israeli territory every day for work and for other things. Have people who work, have Palestinian people who work, say, there in Jerusalem, in the Israeli side, have they been getting vaccines as part of their work? So yeah, I mean the, the the status of of East Jerusalem is is very interesting. So they're sort of permanent residents, um, but many of them would have access to to Israeli healthcare, so they would have been vaccinated. So the the, the ones that are kind of stuck in a sort of limbo are the Palestinians living in let's say Bethlehem and Ramallah. So those are basically full Palestinian cities, yeah. and their government as such is the PA. Um, so their healthcare is provided through them as well. So there is a difference between someone living in Jerusalem and they would have got the vaccine, uh, you know, at the same time as I did, basically, mm. uh, versus somebody just living, you know, ten kilometers uh, down the road in in Ramallah. So it's 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 a very very strange situation. Coming back to where we started, though, Daniel, before I let you go, I think the message coming very clearly from you is: look, there's a lot of exciting things happening in Israel, but it's not the be all and end all that you might be reading about in the newspaper. I think there's, I, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't want to promote my, my blog on your show, but this is what you've said is a very, it, it kind of gets to a very interesting dynamic about Israel. So I, I wrote a, a post a post about this, like there's this very, very strange thing that you wouldn't really get unless you live here, this weird, very, very high tech in some respects, but uh, they also use the fax machine like crazy here, um, one one of the last countries in the world. So, yeah, it, it's in some respects, you know, Israel. I think really exports a lot of its high tech because, like like Ireland, it's a small country, small market. So it's not always a case that you know the the and there's there is definitely a tendency to kind of big up and boast about achievements. So I think they have done a great job in terms of getting that this whole vaccine drive set up very quickly. And if you think about Israel with its army and all that they kind of they they have a, a good handle on logistics did they use the army to vaccinate because i know everybody has to serve at some stage did they use the army to to, to vaccinate people 
Not not to uh, a, a large extent, uh, from what I'm aware, it's it's the health funds and they're using, uh, you know, first aid people and it's, it's doctors and nurses. It's kind of all a bunch of healthcare people and they're, they're not the vaccine centers are they're using in Jerusalem a, a big sports center. Um, so it's a bit odd. You go into, you know, a basketball arena and that's where you're getting your your jab. But um, yeah, so they, they have they have they have done that well. But the you know on the ground, I would say you know there's I see people posting on Facebook saying I'm trying to download this app. They're talking about how the hell do I get it from Google? And there's just confusion. So yeah, it's it's a mixture of it's working well and it's kind of chaos at the same time. So let us know what your blog is so we can keep an eye. Sure, if, if you if you if you check uh, Daniel Rose on Medium, I think I, I think I wrote some just some some post about that recently. All right, listen, good to talk to you. Take care. Thanks, PJ. That's Daniel Rosehill from Cork in Jerusalem. Cork's 96 FM.